Welcome to Sendimix Online Tutorials. On today's episode, we'll be discussing on simple stress and simple strain. Welcome back. In our, in our daily life, witness material elongating or compressing in many ways. The amount by which a material or a wire elongates depends on the amount of load and the nature as well as the cross-sectional area of that material or that wire. <coughs> we'll be discussing on some terms in this video. The first term we have on our list is elasticity. Now, we know that when the force acts on a body, it undergoes what? Some deformation. Let's assume this is a body and the force is acting on Let's say the force P acts on this body. Or let's say, it's, let us say that it's on the compressive force and it acts on this body. Now, when the force is being removed, the tendency for this body now to bounce back to its former position or former length is we call that term elasticity. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that is what we understand by elasticity. So now, when we talk about now, the next term we'll be talking about is stress. Now, we say stress is the resistance of molecules of a body per unit what area. We represent stress like this. We say this is force over what area. This is represented as rho, and this is force per unit what area. The other term we'll be talking about is strain. We say strain is the deformation of material per unit, what, per unit length. So it represents stress as, I mean, strain as epsilon equals to change in L or deformation over the original length. Now, let's talk, discuss on stress. Now, we're looking at the, we'll be looking at two types of what? We'll be looking at two types of stress. The first stress we have is what? Tensile what? Tensile stress. And this and the second stress we have is what a compressive a compressive what stress. This is, yeah, you can see that. Now we talk about tensile stress. When the section is subjected to two equal and opposite pull, and the body tends to increase its length, the stress induced is what we call a tensile stress. Let us assume this is about a cutout body. This is the original length of the body. And this is the original length of the body. Now, when a force is acting on this body, let us assume this is our force. This is the for the, the 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 this is the distance the force has subjected it to. Let us say the the, uh, the first force is taking it this way. The second force is what taking it this way. In this case, you say that this body is undergoing a tensile what a tensile stress. Now, you look at this other one. Now we talk about compressive stress. We say that. It pushes it inside. Let me, and when, when we talk about compressive stress, the length increases in compressive stress. Or you can say the area, yes, sorry, the area decreases. The area decreases as the force increases. So now in compressive stress, the area increases as the force sort decreases. So let us see this is the, this is the, was the original body. Now in a compressive stress, you have something like this. The force is pushing it in. So the area tends to what? Increase. Now there's also, a, there's also a phenomenon we call Hooke's law. I know you must have heard of Hooke, Robert Hooke's. So now we say Hooke's law states that when a material is loaded within its elastic limit, the stress is proportional to the what? Strain. You all know that. So we can see stress over strain equals to modulus of elasticity E. This this um this this uh, relationship here we can use it short this is the mostly what we apply this is the mostly thing we are going to be applying when we're talking about anything that has to do with stress you understand know what i'm saying because when you start discuss when you start bringing this out or start breaking it you understand what i'm saying now let us solve a question we say a steel rod one meter long and 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter in cross section is subjected to a tensile force of 40 kilo newton Determine the elongation of what? Of the rod. If the modulus of elasticity for the rod is equal to 200 GPA. Let me clean this off. Now, the first one we have there is what? Original length. We say the length one is equal to what? One meter. Which will have to be, which we have, which we have to convert to millimeter. So converting this to millimeter, we have what? One times 10 to power what? Three. So now, we say the, the area is equal to 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter in concessional what area and the tensile force p is equal to what 40 kilowatt newton 
modulus of elasticity is equal to 200 GPA, which can be converted to kilonewton per millimeter squared. So what we are looking for is the word elongation. So we are looking for this, the elongation of, of this. And I told you that the, that equation I, I wrote here, I said that this equation we are going to be using for all problems we are going to be, we're going to encounter. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to be using this in most, in short, this is everything about this. This is everything that has to do with anything that has to do with stress and strain and material elongation and material deformation, tensile stress, axial stress, compressive stress, and whatever stress you'll be talking about. All you have to do is just be simplifying it. Like in the case of stress, we see stress, let me draw it here. We see stress is equal to force what per unit area. We see strain is equal to what change in L over what L. So if you look at this, you find out that we have most of, we have everything to, we have all, that needs to be substituted here. We have E, we have force, we have area, we have length, but what we don't have is what change in L. All we have to do is just do a little bit of calculation. Like I said, then I turn this to uh, sorry the middle. You know. Now you have your area. Now this GP needs to be converted to Newton per what millimeter square. So it's going to be what 200 times 10 raised to power 3. It's supposed to be Newton, uh, Newton. But if it's kilometer, if it's kilo Newton. You have to multiply it by the by three, also making it raised to power six newton power what, millimeter what squared. So now our elongation, the L or deformation is going to be what P times L over area times E. This gives us our P to be forty times ten to the power three. It to be remember we I sorry I need to specify this. We have to convert this to to what to newton multiplied by the length. The length is equal to what? 1 times 10 raised to the power 3. Remember, the, the dimensions must be accurately accurately given to have to, to not to not run into problem when solving questions on this. So our our initial length is equal to what? 0 point what? 0 0.5. So that is that for that. I'll give you a comprehension to, to learn more about this. If we if we if we, if we do a, if we should do a recap, we talked about tensile stress, and we just talked about what compress compressive stress. What the example we just gave you is a tensile stress. A compressive stress also goes the same way. You also solve it the same way. Just you know that is the first. What I'm just bringing this as an introduction. In the next subsequent videos, we are going to be discussing on the principle of superposition. We'll be discussing on torsion. We'll be discussing on torsion of circular shafts, torsion of hollow shaft and the rest. Stay tuned. I'll be dropping a comprehension down so I would like you to try it out and see how far you can go in your in your in your problem solving of tensile stress and compressive stress. Goodbye.